stream is starting for the day. Yeah, this is the end of the year stream and uh, I'm not sure how many is going to show up because I'm pretty sure people are busy this time of year. So it's just going to be a quiet hangout stream where I'm going to talk a little bit about what I've spent my year doing and sharing a beer with my friends or I'm sharing a beer with my boyfriend but he's busy at his own computer at the moment so Cheers, everybody. So I've been doing a lot of different, different things this year, actually, uh, when I start to think back about it. Um, <laughs> so uh, if I go all the way back to the start of the year, I was still doing the musical project. Uh, the one where I was cursing about actors and dress fittings and stuff like that. Um, and I think I decided that that might have been my last um, participation in a theatre performance because uh, the time pressure is... Uh, yeah, I'm getting a bit too old for that. Uh, slow. So, um, so I'm like, no, I'm gonna leave that. Uh, maybe there's some younger people who's going to take over. Um, maybe not. Um, not my problem anymore. But it was uh, really fun hanging out with my friend and uh, actually spending some time with another tailor because uh, it's been a while since I've, since I've been working in the profession. So um, I got mightily inspired and she of course is the person who got me into all the Trelebo museum stuff. So. Uh, and the Trelleborg Museum stuff is, um, the, the museum bought some years ago um, some heads, some sculpted uh, wood sculpture heads meant for dolls. But they never really got the dolls made. So uh, my friend and I uh, decided to take up the challenge and start doing these uh, Nordic Guard dolls. Uh, so. So far we've done uh, Frigg, Odin's wife, and we've done Odin, and at the moment we are doing one of the most famous, world famous of the Nordic gods, Thor. Uh, and of course the Norse uh, Thor, not the Marvel Thor, two very, very different people. Uh, and that got me back into a hobby that I can obsess about. Uh, Maybe not so much talking about it, but just sitting down and doing it, and that is chain mail. So um, this is the chain mail coif uh, shoulder piece for Thor that uh, we're working on at the moment. As you can see, there's a bit of a pattern at the edge with different colored rings. Um, and well, let's just say that I ended up ordering <laughs> 40,000 different colored and sized rings from China so uh, I could kind of feed my addiction. So um, this here is um, my chainmail bracelet. Um, and uh, this year for Christmas I made jewelry for my mom and my aunt because besides all of the rings I decided to go and buy some other stuff for making jewelry with. So, um, so here you can see like um, these tiny little uh, pieces, um, and I yeah, and it costs nothing. So of course <laughs> I, I spent like I don't know fifty bucks and ended up with like years of uh, of things to work with um, so yeah it's not the one ring it's the 40,000 rings here so um, and for my aunt I made um, a, a chainmail necklace that I'm uh, doing a new version of for myself um, where I'm working both these rings are both different colors and different sizes so like the black insets here are a slightly smaller ring which uh, makes it naturally um, uh, fit 
uh, with a, a tighter fit up here and then a wider fit out here. Um, so that's the one I'm working at at the moment and God knows how many I'm going to do after that. Uh, but as you can see from my smile, I'm having a lot of fun with this. Um, and uh, just because uh, I had a period from when I worked on the chainmail piece for Thor and uh, before I got the 40k rings, then I got a little bored and I remembered that I had some very tiny rings I ordered earlier. So I did this very long piece of um, tiny chain mail to get an idea about the ring size. Let's try putting them up next to each other. It's very shiny so it's a bit hard for the camera to focus. But you should be able to see that this is like half size of these. Um, I'm not really sure what I'm gonna do with this. Maybe just, you know, do an interesting kind of tie around necklace or something like that because uh, I ended up with quite a bit of it. Um, but that's what happens when I don't have the material I want to use, so... <clears throat> so chainmail has been uh, quite a bit of what I've been occupying myself with this year. <coughs> and then besides that, of course, there's work. Um, because I got my job uh, April 1st, and it's not a joke. It was really awesome to actually get employment. Um, I s sometimes I think my camera looks weird here. Uh, give me a second, I need to regulate the size of my feed. Let's see if this helps. Da -da. Get my face in the shot. Everything looks different on screen than it does in my OBS setup, so I'm just gonna fill around with this a little bit and see if that helps. Do maybe like that. Do I need to make it even smaller? Hmm. <laughs> oh yeah, you did all the modeling this year, well she I think that's so cool. I just love it when, when people, they take up uh, a hobby and then really get into it. It's so fun watching the development uh, when people start working. Hi Freaks Place, welcome uh, to this end of the year stream with beer and if I get in the mood maybe some Bailey as well. Um, oh you got one of the dodo Sazu, that's awesome, they're so cute. So yeah, uh, yeah, crafting definitely, uh, as everybody who knows me knows, not something I'm going to get tired up early, uh, tired off soon. Uh, it's the English thingy and the beer. Um, so I'm going to keep on doing that. And besides the chain mail, we had all these uh, bone stuff that I ended up doing. Um, I never thought this would actually get into any kind of... A, Contro this would get, uh, create any kind of controversy, um, but apparently um, there was a discussion while I wasn't present in one of the Facebook groups I posted in, um, but I think it was one of those, um, you know, I know vegan people who are quite uh, normal, but some vegans on Facebook, they get really aggressive, um, but well, never mind. Besides that, uh, I got some positive response on that. Uh, had the joy of actually making a needle in mammoth tooth. Uh, that, that's at least an animal where no one can say that it got killed because of that needle, because it's been dead for at least 10,000 years. Um, so, uh, and, and that was quite an experience trying to work in a material like that and um, figuring out why they actually wanted to use ivory for making certain materials because it's a lot more stronger, a lot more flexible, you can do a lot pointier needle than with any other kind of bone because the density and the elasticity of the material is just wonderful. I mean, Today we can't use it because we've been stupid in the way we, we've managed the resources. Um, plus, n no reason to shoot an elephant, really. 
So, yeah, I know Jabba Bab, and I'm I'm, I'm going to keep most of my rant about the year positive because I've actually had a really really great year. But that was one of the very very few negative reactions I've had uh, online this year. So, uh, doesn't happen a lot. I'm I'm so uh, non-political in everything I post. So. Uh, yeah, it's nice seeing you. We weren't sure if anyone else was going to show up, but it was like, let's just do an end of the year stream anyway, because I can't promise to do anything tomorrow, and I think most people are going to be busy tomorrow anyway. Um. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Welshie. Thank you. Oh, imagine the response I would get if I did anything like that. Even though I think um, there are certain cultures where it was kind of ancestor worship that you actually use the remnants of the ancestors. Um, but you know, today a lot of that today there, there's a lot of taboos about death, whether it's animal death, human death, which is also a kind of animal death. Um, so I'm, I'm not gonna. I thought about mentioning stuff like that with my very Danish um, blunt humor on the internet, but I've managed to keep my mouth quiet so far because I'm not really into pissing people off unless there's a purpose. So, but it's been a good year all in all. Um, I got my driver's license at the ripe age of 40, 43. Yeah, I'm 44 now. So yeah, 43. I got my very first car. Um, so now I'm like, I'm a real adult now. I can drive around in my own car. Uh, that's kind of awesome. And it helps up, helps out a lot with work as well, um, for picking up students and stuff like that. But also, <laughs> it's so funny, my mom, she's like, uh, she's 69 now. Uh, she's like, yeah, we got a car because um, besides driving for work and for doing my own shopping and stuff like that, I have like a once a week appointment every Thursday. I have to go and pick up my mom and my aunts because their magazine comes out that day and then we have to go shopping. And then I help them shopping some other days of the week as well. But it's like my mom is really enjoying my driver's license, no doubt about that. So. And when you think about, um, I mean, I live in the province, so this this is not real countryside, but still, if you want to do anything and see anything out here, it's a really good thing to have a car. On the right side of the road. <laughs> exactly. I, th I think I might get compu confused if I had to go driving in Britain. Um, so yeah, on with what happened during the year. It's because I, I read chat and then I get distracted. Yeah, um, I went to Bologna this, um, uh, this fall. My niece, uh, who is 23 now, that's crazy. Uh, she is, uh, studying, let's see, what's it called? Geophysics? I think it's called Geophysics internationally. Um, and she got a year abroad, uh, or a semester, uh, not abroad, but uh, as an exchange student in Italy. So she went down there three months early to learn as much Italian as possible. And she's been homesick since she went away, really. So uh, we've taken shifts in the family visiting her. So I think she had like one visit from home every month. Um, and for the first time ever, I actually flew out with my mom uh, to Italy so we could celebrate my mom's uh, 69th birthday with my niece in Bologna. And that, w that was nice. I mean, I have to admit that as a Scandinavian who eat a lot of uh, rye bread, uh, I really missed like things with fibers, uh, everything down there was like white bread and a lot of it was very sweet and we tried to kind of uh, eat uh, like the locals did but you know past 40 my stomach isn't as um, accepting of foreign cuisine as when I was younger so 
Yeah, the bread matters. Oh, well, she no doubt about that. Oh, sorry. I just, I think I got an eyelash caught in my eye. One second. There we go. Ugh, annoying. Hi, Pinky. Thank you for the sub. Two months in a row. That's a record. <coughs> It's good to see you. So today I'm just hanging out and uh, since I got new people I'm gonna re-show the chainmail exhibition that I showed off in the start of the stream before you got in here um, because that's been like one of the things I've been doing a lot of this year. So um, crazy uh, chainmail bracelet with like an, an insert um, everything made from really really cheap rings from China um, the only thing I can say is that they don't cause nickel allergy because I have that and I've been wearing it a lot. This here is like the chain metal shoulder piece for the Thor uh, puppet we are making for Trelleborg Theatre. It's Trelleborg Museum, not theatre. Um, again with different color rings. Oh, thank you. Thank you for the bits. Um, and then I've got like this piece here where I'm uh, working with even more color and sizing of the rings to kind of get different effects on it. This is going to be um, a necklace. Maybe one day if, if I go totally crazy I'm, I'm just gonna keep on expanding this and it's gonna end up being a crazy chainmail t-shirt or something like that. <coughs> because, uh, oh Top one cheer guy. Sorry. That was, um, yeah, it's from the beer. Oh, Twitch Survey. Yeah, I did a couple of those. Some of them I got points for, and some of them weren't working as well. I think the autofocus on this is a little wonky. Yeah, I need to get a new camera. Get my get my act together and make everything look professional. Nah, that's not gonna happen. <laughs> oh, darn it. I just kicked the table and then the camera went on a, on a little fly. Um, I'm getting the rings colored because, um, you know, this guy I've talked about before that I do graphics for, for these um, 3D postcard thingies, yeah? He has uh, contacts all over the world for getting all this hobby stuff home. And he showed me this uh, this website from China. And I was like, I, I think I spent two days just going through stuff that I really wanted and, you know, limiting my wish list. And I was like, I ended up buying those 40,000 uh, rings plus extra stuff like this um, li little piece, uh, this insert piece I've got in here. Uh, just to have something to play around with. So um, it's like um, if I ever get really poor, if nothing else, I'm going to be able to open a hobby store <laughs> for a little while. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, I was just glued to the screen. Um, and I mean, I was only looking at one uh, specific um, area, only rings and uh, a bronze colored object, bronze and copper, because those were like the two colors I was interested in. There was just so much. And I'm definitely probably going to buy some more stuff from there if I ever run out of the stuff that I have now. Um, now, 40,000 is, um, I think I calculated that something like this piece here that would fit this much on a, on a t-shirt that's like 8,000 rings. Um, but the, it, it's quite a lot. And this is even like one of the simplest uh, chainmail weaves you can do. I could make it even more compact. This is like a four in one weave, uh, European chainmail. Uh, but you can do the same weave with like five in one, six in ones. I think seven in one is one of the the ones I've seen where they use the most rings. So yeah, it, there's definitely some weight in this. Um, no doubt about that. Mm -mm. 
but I don't know. I, I mean, I, it's probably the autistic side of me that goes nuts about the repetition in doing this work. This is like the one with the tiniest rings I've been playing around with. Um, and the way it looks like this is actually because I came to a point where I was like, I don't know what I'm going to use this for, so I'm just going to do like these uh, equidistance pieces with some bigger rings in between, and then I can always remove the bigger rings and then put it together sideways, depending on what I want to do with it. But I mean, now it's like, it's almost a belt by now, so... Well, I, I just love playing around with um, any kind of thing you can do with metal and wire, and that's simple enough that you can actually just sit and do it with um, simple old-fashioned hand tools. I mean, they, they've invented a lot of different specialty tools for a lot of different crafts. And one of the things that I experience often when I post things, like when I did the bone carvings, um, is people, when I tell them what tools, they, they're like, what tools do you use to make this? And then I'm like, okay, I'm just using this and this because I'm basically always just using tools I have lying around. I always get a lot of posts afterwards of people posting all these expen expensive specialty tools you can get to do the same work faster. And I'm like, well, yeah, well, I hope it helps everybody else because I'm not really interested in doing it faster because I don't do any of this commercially. It's just a fun hobby. Um, but th there's a lot of... Um, I don't know if you noticed it too in certain crafting forums, but there's a things things where people post something and uh, some people come in and basically just to show off that they might be at a higher level in the same skill or something like that instead of just saying, oh, that's cool, I love what you did. It's like, yeah, but why didn't you? Um, <laughs> and I've been wondering about that. What's that all about? I mean, if you like it, say you like it. If if you're like, oh, I'm way better than that, then go somewhere else and show off. I mean, seriously. Hi, Maya. Good to see you. Yeah, exactly, well, she, uh, A big part of the crafting experience for me, all the way back from when I was a kid, is the thing that you sit down and you... you spend the time trying to work on details and get in the right feel for a thing, whether it's working with clay, drawing, doing jewellery, really anything, uh, knitting, crocheting, um, and it's not, this is not like modern day production, you just have to do it as fast as possible so you can sell a million of this on Etsy. It's the experience of having the joy of actually doing something with your hands and producing something. So. Uh, yeah, I'm just ranting uh, as usual. This is just the end of the year rant, so I get to rant about everything that happened all year. And I think according to the normal theme of shows like this, I all also get to rant about what I want to do next year. So, uh, so that's quite a lot of um, possibilities in the ranting section. <coughs> so... Um, Cheers again. I'm trying to drink this in small sips, otherwise my problems with enunciation from lack of teeth is going to get even worse, worse because of an addition of beer. Yeah, I thought I'd start early today because uh, at this dark season I tend to get tired pretty early which really bodes well for tomorrow night. I mean, like the last couple of New Year's Eves, I've ended up going to bed at 11 and then get woken up again at 12 when everybody starts shooting off fireworks and, and the cat's getting a little erratic at that point as well. Not so much. They're, they're like old cats now, so... Uh, um, holidays, yeah. Um, I think that one of... I, my personal um, 
Do I celebrate holidays? Yes, I do love Christmas, but it's not something that, um, let's see, you can see up there, I have Christmas decoration. This is just uh, paper decorations, and they're actually pretty old by now, like six or seven years old from before we moved into the house that I hang every year uh, with the little hearts on them that I've um, braided from paper. It's like a Danish tradition, I, I think. And don't you do braided hearts in a lot of other countries as well? Um, but <clears throat> on the 21st, I always think about all the Viking people, the As uh, Asa believers that I know. Asa is um, the word for the belief in the God, the Norse gods. Uh, because on the 21st, they, they uh, celebrate solstice. And because I live in the area I live in in Denmark, the, the, I know quite a few actually. And then on the 23rd, we always eat rice pudding, or what you call it, you, milk and rice, you boil it together uh, for an hour or so, and you get this um, rice thingy, um, and you eat that with cinnamon and sugar and butter, and then you save the leftovers um, to make dessert for Christmas. And then on the 24th, of course, in Denmark, that's Christmas Eve, or Christmas Day, or both, Christmas Eve. Yeah, uh, and then I at that day I get up at at latest uh, seven in the morning because at eight I have to have like stuffed a duck and put it in the oven, so it can roast for around ten hours before dinner. <laughs> um, very slow cook, but a very very nice duck. If, if you're going to eat like an animal like that, you should at least celebrate it in the way you prepare. Spend some time on it. It's just better. So, now I'm pretty sure it wasn't Darkwing. I don't know. Anyone heard from her lately? Hmm. Nah, I'd be stupid to pretend I'm a vegetarian when I'm not. Um... I, I like certain kinds of uh, meat dishes, so. Uh, yeah, usually in Denmark you eat uh, duck, roast duck, or you eat um, a pig roast, uh, where you still have like the skin, the skin is still on, and then you uh, carve it so you get like um, crispy, pork <laughs> skins, I don't know what you call it, on top. Um, that's like the two most classic dishes to have in Denmark. Um, I'm pretty happy about the duck thing because that tastes absolutely awesome and the pig roast can be okay if you spend a good amount of money on you know free-range meat because it, it has to be good meat if it's like a lot of the mass-produced meat doesn't really taste as good, and since I'm uh, lucky enough to have the money to buy all the free-range uh, organic stuff, um, that's mainly what we do. So, oh, salmon and potatoes, yeah. Um, my mom did some grave de lax, but. Um, she and my aunt ate it all, so I didn't get any. <laughs> it's like a... Oh, hi, Misu. Welcome. <coughs> and welcome to you, too, So Not just answering your question. Welcome to you, too. It's good to see so many. I mean, I thought everybody would be really, really busy. So... Uh, yeah, um... So, besides doing all the chain mail thing and... Uh, doing like um, voluntary work for the museum. I've got my job, uh, which I'm really enjoying. I mean, I love those kids, um, or kids and kids. I mean, they're like teenagers on their way into adulthood, so calling them kids might not be entirely fair. But um, it, it's uh, challenging in a positive way. I have to 
think about different uh, angles at teaching for each and every one of them. Um, and I kind of enjoy that, having having to uh, work everything out so, so I can help them improve in different areas. Um, and I'm having really fun with um, that uh, scratch thing I showed you in my last stream. Um, so, uh, programming, um, I haven't done anything complicated in a long time. It's, it's all very, very simple because it has to kind of correspond to the teaching level. Um, but at least it's getting me back into um, playing around with game development, development because during the last year I've gotten quite a bit away from game development. And uh, I want to spend some more time playing around with that again in the new year. So that's like number one thing for 2019 that I know I would like to do more of. I would like to go back to doing a bit more with playing around with game development. Um, there's a reason why I, I chose that as my specialty when I, I studied. I'm not going to promise that I'm going to do any insane, grand, awesome games, but I, I might do uh, a few little things just for the fun of it. Um, and what else for <laughs> yeah, exactly. A 2019 to-do list. Um, number two thing, the second thing that I would like to do in 2019 is uh, about this channel, actually, because uh, I have had quite a lot of fun having uh, Zazu and Welchie hanging out while we played the Dream Daddies game. So I was thinking about um, inviting some people to visit me in Discord voice uh, to help me um, entertain a little bit and some of the people are of course people that usually hang out in this channel because I think everybody I know is extremely interesting so if you suddenly get an invitation don't be surprised so <laughs> just saying um, <coughs> I was thinking of it a bit like, I mean, I love Who Part. Uh, I'm not going to live up to that standard and the way they're doing it, it, it requires a lot of work of editing and stuff. It would be fun just doing a live hangout, uh, talking to people about things we have in common or different things that we're working on, uh, promoting people I know if I have a chance. Um, yeah, yeah, I like that. You're on my list, Suk Island. Yeah, exactly. I want to do an art stream where we can have fun somehow, uh, see if we can find some way maybe to draw with the same theme or uh, talk to people about uh, all the procrastination and stuff you never get done <laughs> when you work with drawing. Uh, so yeah, that would be kind of fun. Um, Actually, even I was I was also thinking about uh, for more s serious uh, stream. I was really interested uh, back when Searle visited me. Um, some of the the work that he does, he works with um, something that had to do with flow capacity in urban planning, and I'm like, I don't know what it is, but it sounds interesting. Tell me more about it. So. Um, so as with everything else I'm doing, it's probably not going to be very showy. It's going to be like hanging out, um, talking, um, trying to get around a subject and see what we can uh, find out. So, um, so if people are interested in that, that's uh, that would be a fun thing to do. Oh, I'm re unreliable too, Sukaila. That's the perfect thing. Just trying to plan a, a time and place and making sure that we do it in a way so you can run off uh, and change dirty divers if you have to. I promise I'll fill in with voice. I can rant. I'll just find something to talk about and then you can just pop out, do the business, come back in and yeah. <laughs> exactly so. Oh yeah, that would be awesome, uh, painting on the same canvas as well. Uh, I can't help it, Wilshie. I, I think that 
there's, there's probably not a subject in the world that I find boring. Um, it's just a question about finding an expert. Um, because things that might seem like a very, very tiny, boring subject, as soon as you start poking it and looking around it and seeing what it's connected to, it turns out interesting. So, so yeah. Uh, I may not have a degree in engineering. doesn't mean I'm not, I don't find it interesting. Uh, my niece is also sending me, uh, every time she writes a paper about geophysics, whether I understand it or not. I think the last one was about how to calculate errors in messages from a satellite with a, a, a faulty uh, message, uh, a, a flaw in the code that came from it. So it was like... Uh, uh, some of it was programming, some of it was, was knowledge about the exact flaw that that satellite had and how to program to uh, to translate into the correct um, data. So yeah, everything like that, I'm interested. <laughs> hey Dark Winter Dreams, good to see you. No, I swear, I, I, if I had thought that it was dark wing, I would never have uh, cooked it. It said that this was a duck from Denmark. So if we have any Danish participants who have any duck names, it might have been one of those. Yeah, it's a possibility. <laughs> it was a good duck. And, and I have to roast one again February because my niece is, uh, when, we were, when we went to visit her in November at my mom's birthday, um, she was so homesick and she was just talking about Christmas and the fact that she was not going to be here for all the Christmas food. So I had to promise her that I'm going to cook a duck when she comes back in February. And um, no, 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 so not that duck. <laughs> Oh yes, that's true, Zazu. That's true. Um, you jump into the new year. Um, I think it's a bit like um, the tales of the old druidic tradition, where you would also you would jump over fire. So I think that if you go way back, um, there's probably something deeper in it from some of the old religion, but. Uh, what is translated to today is that a lot of people will stand on a chair um, or, or a table or whatever can actually hold them and then they're going to jump into the new year and you will actually, if you have someone you want to jump into the new year with, you will hold the hand. Uh, so you're like, together you're jumping into the new year. Uh, I have to admit that I haven't done that for many, many years because I'm breakable. Uh, and it would just be like, when you think about New Year's Eve and this is Denmark, so a certain amount of alcohol might be consumed before you reach midnight. So, yeah, yeah, not a good, good combination, not really. So, um, but it's, it's um, I, th I think the origin is that you jump because you want to leave the old behind. So you let you jump from the old year and you land in the new year. So, yeah, shuffling into the new year, falling into the new year. So, uh, so yeah, if, if you're not breakable, uh, maybe I should just find a, like a small plinth to stand up on, something like 10 centimeters or something like that. Can I just fall off my heels and then wear heels for the occasion? Hmm. Well... I'm going to say cheers once again. Uh, as I said, if my chat becomes slurry, it's uh, because I am actually drinking a beer. And later on, from my Lannister glass, I'm going to take a shot of Bailey. <coughs> 
I'm not working at the moment. I mean, I have some work I have to have done from now, but I mean, I'm only, I'm going to back to work on the 8th first, so I have like plenty of time to um, put in those uh, 12 hours of work that I have to do. So, so yeah, um, let's see, what made an impression on me in 2018? Let's just say that I got really nostalgic when it came to games, so there was no new games. It's been all Minecraft and Diablo because my life has been filled up with um, teaching and getting the driver's license, doing the work for the museum. Um, yeah, all of the stuff I've already talk talked about. Um, oh, is there any more Danish traditions? Yeah, we watch some really bad TV on New Year's Eve. Uh, at six o'clock, the Queen uh, will give her New Year's speech. Uh, so, uh, Anders and me, we are going to have our New Year's dinner at my mom and aunt's. Um, my cousin and his wife is coming too. Uh, so, we are going to have uh, the traditional boiled cod in mustard sauce. <laughs> it's, it's actually quite awesome. Um, and... <clears throat> I think actually my brother-in-law and my sister went out and got that fish because they fish a lot. So um, so we're going to go up there uh, a bit before five and then we're going to start the dinner and then the dinner is going to end with uh, at six o'clock when the Queen is going to do her New Year's speech about well, basically, uh, it's the same recipe as I'm doing in this show, just a bit more uh, focused. You know, what did we do in the old year, what can we learn from it, and what should we maybe do in a new way, uh, or keep on doing in the new year. So, uh, cod and mustard is awesome. Yeah. Un unfortunately, I, I might have developed a bit of a mustard allergy on top of my other allergies. So, uh, I'm, I'm going to have to, like, Go heavy on the cod and light on the mustard, which is so sad. Mustard is awesome. Yeah, self-reflection, uh, but also like uh, when the queen speaks, it's and I mean I'm not a big royalist. I really, I'm really not. My mom's from Finland. That's like a republic with a president. Uh, but it's like this is Denmark is. A really really old kingdom um, so uh, and and the royal f it when I look at like the royal family in Britain it seems a lot more stiff of a lip um, I mean there are more relaxed uh, royal countries than Denmark if you go to uh, to Norway and Sweden, they're actually more relaxed about it. But th there's like a mix of being like the Hans Christian Andersen fairy tale country with a royal family and stuff like that. And it, it's just part of tradition. So what's everyone else doing for New Year's Eve? I mean, for us, like I said, it's going to be like a quiet dinner, with some traditional food, watching the speech, and then after that, we're probably going to go home and then, because I live like um, 1500 meters from my mom, uh, she lives right across town. Um, so we're going to go home and then we're going to do our drinking there so we don't have to sit and do our drinking with like 70 year old ladies who really gets tired early and wants to go to bed. Um, we're going to sit here, get tired early and want to go to bed while we drink something. Um, that's going, going to be a lot of the celebration. Um, and I'm not like, uh, I know some people are like, oh, they're going to go out and then burn a lot of money on a lot of rockets and stuff like that. But I'm like, my, the, the, the like environmental friendly part of me isn't really into banging off all that, um, that much black powder. <laughs> it's, it's just, um. Well, yeah. If you like it, you like it. If you don't, it's like, it's just annoying if you want to go to sleep before 12 o'clock. Oh, yeah, exactly, uh, Maya. So we're going to stay at home with the cats for the rest of the evening. 
Uh, and it's not, I don't think it's going to be that crazy. Usually in a town the size of ours, it's maybe like half an hour before midnight, half an hour after midnight, it's like the crazy period. And then there's just going to be a bit more fireworks um, spread out throughout the evening. Some people go out and do some fireworks after the Queen's speech, so the children have a chance to go out and, and watch it there. So, um... Until the neighbors wake you up with bloody fireworks. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, oh, Gumira Yeah, yeah. That that's gonna that's gonna take you all evening to eat that. It's like these tiny, tiny things, and then you put veggies and cheese, and then you toast them, and I mean, it tastes awesome. It's like um, a a grill version instead of fondue. Um, fry anything instead of putting cheese on anything. Uh, and you can spend like an entire evening eating in ways like that. Um, so, so yeah, raclette sounds like a good plan. I mean, we're not good at eating for several hours in my family. I don't know why, but I mean, in, in Denmark, uh, when I go to go to parties, uh, big parties like weddings and stuff like that, often it's like you get your uh, starter and then you listen to speeches and then it's two hours later and then you get one more course, then there's more speeches and like, I mean, it's, it's really, really a long meal and in my family I'm like used to you sit down then you eat then you're done eating then you get up <laughs> and then that's kind of it and then you can go and drink some coffee and talk if you want to do that <coughs> yeah that's a good idea uh, dark winter dreams um, especially today I mean you never know uh, not just allergies but you know um, uh, people have different food preferences, uh, different lifestyles, and uh, maybe someone have something that, well, I mean, I know people who can't eat any green veggies because they're like on blood thinners, uh, stuff like that. So just doing one thing for everybody can be pretty hard to, to kind of make it like a, a hit for everybody. So, uh, so yeah, anything where it can like if you're several people where you can do like tiny dishes or do a raclette or something like that. Yeah, that's awesome. Um. <laughs> oh, I don't even want to think about what my cats would say if I came home with a baby. There would be some pretty pissed off kitties, I think. So, uh, so yeah, I mean, they're the ones sleeping with me in bed, they're the ones sleeping with me on the couch, they're the ones walking all over my crafts, um, sitting on my keyboard, nobody else is allowed to do that. I mean, they're, they're having jealousy issues internally just between the three cats, so, uh, oh no, wouldn't work out. I think I'll just st stick to my cat babies. <sighs> I'm thinking about what else did I do this year, what else do I want to do next year. I mean, I know I want to do a lot with work. Um, I mean, yeah, I've become an even more inconsistent streamer than I was before, and a lot of that has to do with the work and the volunteer work. Um, because now I have, like, every Thursday, I mean, not now with uh, Christmas and New Year's, but, like, uh, Every day, like uh, normal work days, every Thursday I, w I meet up with my tailor friend and we do stuff for, for Trelleborg Museum uh, because there's like nine of these puppets and we got through two and a half this year. So it's a project that might take a little while because everything has to be done um, by hand and um, has to be like original Viking methods. Um, so yeah, I want to stream. 
I want to. I, I both. I want to stream more, and I want to stream more where I involve other people, uh, so that is more more of a conversation. Because one of the things that's um, that's hard, especially if if you have a teaching job, is that you already uh, invest a lot of energy in planning what you're going to talk about, trying to make sure you're just semi-coherent while you're talking for uh, hours and hours. And uh, with teaching, I have, I mean, some days I'm like, some weeks, I, I mean, I only work one day because that's because that's what my energy level is at. Um, but it's like, sometimes it's three hours of talking and finding different ways to explain um, different areas of code and software development, whatever we're working at at the moment. And besides that, there's the planning, which a lot of the time isn't doesn't really look active. It's not like I'm sitting down and doing heavy research, but I have to sit down and think through, oh, how is this student going to react to this? Because I have, like, um, a special students. Um, I've got a student with what's it called, ADHD, and uh, I've got autistic students, uh, don't have the blind student anymore. So now I, uh, that means I don't have to make sure I adapt both for visual and non-visual. But there's a lot of thought that goes into it. And there actually is, when I sit down and rent like this, I've actually often sat down and and thought about some of the subjects I want to talk about and what subjects I want to avoid talking about, even though <clears throat> they might be on my mind at the moment, because I don't want to go out and be like politically controversial in this day and age. I mean, uh, <laughs> seriously, no, just not doing that. Um, well, I, I was really happy about the coding project with the blind student, and I think that he moved really far from when he initially started at the uh, at the school and then uh, for the semester I got to have him but um, unfortunately um, our school you, you we have to be paid for what we're doing and uh, sometimes the casework on a student can slow down uh, due to things that we are not masters at, about so Master Silver. So I'm, I'm just having my fingers crossed that he somehow has gotten through to them that he is supposed to be someone who studies because otherwise he might end up getting like the handicap stamp um, and being excluded for something that he would actually be pretty darn good at. Um. <coughs> Uh, a tremendous amount of, well, uh, yeah, it, it is a tremendous amount of work, but in some ways that's how my brain already works. Um, when I think about a subject, I often think about how I would translate it to others um, if I had to teach it. it it's, it helps me actually remember things better when I don't just have to remember the material, but I have to kind of uh, do a little bit of analysis on how I would pass this on to someone else as well. Um, and I think I'm as fortunate to have my students as my students are to have me. Because um, there's always like um, two sides of teaching. And um, a teacher gets better by involving themselves um, in the work of the students and trying to... Uh, I mean, the harder it is to teach someone, the more you're going to learn from teaching that person. Uh, so at the moment, I'm not learning that much because they're not that hard to teach, really. Uh, so, yeah, don't want to end up being lazy just because I've got good students, you know. Um, so, but yeah, and um, on, onwards to the thing that I started this rant about what I want to do in 2019, including this channel where uh, I also, besides me streaming and talking to other people, I have two mods that's promised me that they're going to stream on this channel. And um, if there's anyone else out there who's like me is really inconsistent 
that would like to stream once in a while, uh, who wants to pop in on and do it on this channel, um, I think that would be awesome. Because then maybe together we could actually stream more regularly <laughs> than that we do uh, individually. So if anyone ever thought about that, feel free to contact me. You know all my emails and Twitters and Facebooks and stuff like that. So if, if you feel like trying it out on some level, uh, feel free to contact me. And uh, on, in my channel you don't have to be like super professional. You, you can... Am I, do, do I have adult language on <clears throat> right now? You can F around. Uh, and have fun with stuff. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome, Welshie. Yeah. It's so good you got that new apartment. And the new internet. Yeah. I'm making sure that my mods are prepared so they can go in and, you know... I nah, didn't get any apartment. You got that on his own. So, um, so yeah, I'm looking really much forward to that, especially because Tuesday is my work day, so I can get home from work, um, just relax, sit down, and uh, watch those two um, chaotic siblings stream a little bit. I think it's because I'm when I think about this channel, I don't think about it as much as my channel, more like. This is like the unofficial clubhouse, where uh, a lot of the same people hang out. Maybe, just a little bit. Uh, I'm just the one who keeps the light on, and uh, everybody's hanging out in chat. So we might as well um, hang out a bit more in voice as well. Who cares if there's a camera? You don't even have to have a camera. I have a camera. So yeah, uh, and I think that my mods are open, as I think I'm seeing in chat, for somebody to go play with them as well when they're streaming. And uh, there's actually one game, uh, just to go back to my insane game nostalgia, just playing uh, Minecraft and Diablo 3 this year, I think I may go back even further, because... Um, if I'm not totally mistaken, there's some classic uh, World of Warcraft coming out in 2019. And when that starts up, I am going to play World of Warcraft. I'm going to go in there, and if it's not as annoyingly hard and grinding as it was in the vanilla, I'm going to complain. Yeah, because um, I really enjoyed that. <laughs> I think I spent at least a week behind a Rathi Arena. Uh, just farming in the hope of getting stuff with Jordan, and I was never annoyed. So, uh, so yeah. Um, if that finally comes out, I am going to go old school World of Warcraft, and you are going to see some awesome streams of me just running around and farming for crafting. Doesn't that sound uh, really, really interesting? And or maybe go back to my. Uh, I had some different hobbies back in the original World of Warcraft. I was, uh, I loved. Um, being part of the Explorers Guild, um, which meant that you tried to see how many places you were not supposed to go in World of Warcraft, you could go anyway, uh, just to for something to do. So yeah, um, and one of the reasons I'm looking all nostalgic about this is, of course, that World of Warcraft my, was my first MMO, uh, and you always remember your first one, uh, especially if you enjoyed playing with the people you played with. And World of Warcraft uh, came out not that long after me and Anders met each other. So that was of course the most awesome MMO ever because um, we played together. So uh, It was like uh, uh, one of the things I remember really I had a really crappy computer back when uh, we met each other and World of Warcraft came out and it was like, I was a good alert to have um, whether or not you ran into PvP raiding parties because my computer was just totally stalled 
if anyone high level with advanced gear got close to me. So it's like, oh fuck. So, oh, if this is not an adult language, sorry very much. It's just part of my language. Um, well, if someone's coming and I'm going to be dead any minute now, because every, everything would just freeze up. But it was one of the things that uh, got me to buy a new computer, so uh, so I actually get back into gaming again. Hadn't gamed for a while, um, but I loved getting back into it then. Yeah, farming in WoW and getting stuck in the environment, yeah. Oh, fishing! Yeah, fishing! Absolutely one of my favorite crafts. Always bring a fishing uh, rod so that wherever you are, you can just stand and do some fishing. Definitely. American? No, I don't think so. I think you can't get a lot further from American than me. So, um, I'm, I'm from Denmark to the people who didn't know already, so, yeah. Um, well, I played back from, oh, I think it was open beta, yeah. Um, so I got to level 30 before the service got shut down for the real opening. So I just got into, um, oh, what's it called? I mean, I can't even remember the geography correctly from World of Warcraft anymore, so it, it's been quite a few years since I've been in there. You know, like the jungle area. You play a lions, and then you go to uh, the forest with all the spiders, and you run down. And, and that's the hood. Oh, he's busy listening to music. He can't hear me. Um, well, if uh, if Sazu is as reliable as always, I'm pretty sure it's going to be on YouTube. So, um, it's awesome that you just took your time to pop by. Oh, Stranglethorn Vale! Exactly, Symes. Yeah, that's what is the one on top, Stranglethorn Vale, yeah. So I just got to the start of Stranglethorn Vale, and then there was like the big server shut down before the big opening. Um, and I mean, one of the, uh, <laughs> the challenges of our early relationship was the fact that I'm PvE, my boyfriend is PvP. So, of course, I went and played with him on the PvP servers, and uh, I, I've really been cursing a lot just because effing people came by where I was farming for my craft and killed me just because of the PvP thingy. So, no, no PvP. Oh, lots of hugs to you too. Have a happy, happy new year. And uh, I'll see you in the new year. Yeah, exactly the days of dishonorable kills. Yeah. Uh, but uh, actually, it's... Um, a lot of the really hard stuff about it is some of the things that I miss. Um, one of the things that... I know that it makes it a lot easier for people who don't have a lot of time to spend getting to know the game to have quest markers. But I really, really want a game where you can't complete a quest on it unless you read or listened to the quest giver. So that everything isn't just given to you. So you have to fight a little bit for it. I mean, I'm old. I, I, I don't need everything right now. I want to feel that I earned it somehow. And the harder it is, um, the more you earned it. So, um, lots of grinding and uh, maybe even the PvP battle at, uh, what was it called? Oh, when you flew in. Uh, God. Terran Mill. Terran Mill. There was these crazy PvP battles at the Griffin Post at Terran Mill where you have like this tiny horde village and uh, yeah, Terran Mill Binky, yeah. Um, and that battle there where you you just knew that um, when you flew flew in, you were probably going to get killed if the other uh, if the other faction had taken the power. So uh, so yeah. Um, but but that was like um, 
because there was, it was uh, the, the world was the map was more alive because everybody wasn't in dungeons all the time so you ran into people and stuff like that I know I'm just being nostalgic but I'm hoping that maybe some other old school gamers is going to be as turned on by the idea as I am and then at least we can go in and have some old people fun or something like that you know yeah I it, it's right I, uh, it, I have to take a break because it's uh, the usual one hour break so um, yeah I mean Nostalgia is fun. And fun is fun. Oh, flying in the world of Warcraft. Yeah, especially the. I mean, uh, when you had to. Uh, back in the day when all the Griffin routes weren't connected, and some places you had to run from one place to another to get another connection to get to the right place, and you had to do a lot more planning about how to get back and forth. I think it was for fun because you got like a real world feeling about it. And I loved the flying because it wasn't like an instant teleport. I mean, okay, that there's magic in a game, but. The it was like oh I'm going on a long flight now I could just uh, jump on the Griffin and then I'm going to go out and put the coffee uh, on and when the coffee is done I'm still going to be flying yeah yeah so yeah when when World of Warcraft um, the classic edition comes out. I'm going to play, and uh, it's of course it's it's going to be on the European server. I tried once having a World of Warcraft account on a North American server just for fun, and that was the World of, of Warcraft account that got hacked. So, no more uh, North American accounts for me. I'm just sticking to uh, to the European accounts. I haven't had that issue with any of my European accounts. So. So yeah, anyone who, who wants to play when that comes up, uh, join me. We're going on an adventure. Yeah. I hope you want to play Horde. <laughs> I don't know why. I just want to be a cow. It's fun being a cow. A cow druid. A flying cow. That is awesome. Oh, I could start from level one. Yeah. Oh yeah, horde, definitely. I mean, I can play alliance. I started out playing alliance because Anders and uh, his friends uh, were alliance players, uh, and I wanted to play with them. So I, my first character ever in World of Warcraft, was the dwarven hunter Tony Cat, and that's how I got my screen name that I've kept ever since. So. Um, yeah, uh, because I don't want to. I don't. In games, I don't want to be pretty. <laughs> so I, I'm. I'm going to go for um, one of the uglier female characters. Uh, I love it if they look a little bit clumsy. Uh, so trolls and cows are pretty high on my list. Um, So yeah, I love my dwarf hunter. Uh, it was especially fun because everybody was like, "Oh, I'm an idol or something like that." So uh, I I love the trolls. They're like <laughs> really goofy. So um, but I was a, a dwarf hunter back in the day where uh, bullets took up inventory space. <laughs> that was awesome. Then you made your quivers. And then you use those. Um, I think today there's not even, um, you know, bullets or arrows for the hunters anymore. It's kind of just incorporated into everything. So, uh, so yeah, th there were some things there back in the early things that that was uh, really different. Um, and I like the way you did the the skill system back then. Um, you had to think, and I like to think. Oh yeah, running out of ammo. That was that was really. Everybody remember to buy ammo. Oh, did you craft a special ammo for this uh, instance? Yeah. Uh, so oh. Yeah, I like that. Uh, 
so so yeah that that's an invitation so i'm going to go to break uh with the invitation to join me when i get back to world of warcraft maybe at some time this year next year 2019 uh depending on uh, on when blizzard uh decides to um, to publish so i'm going to shut down video and sound and leave you all with a black screen. Oh wait, I can put up this one. You can look at this very adorable image of three cats and some blue squares. Isn't that awesome? I'll see you again in uh, 10 minutes time after I've got my legs stretched.
and sound. So I'm back. I hope you had a really, really good break with that. The eyes and the huge ears. I'm really hoping you're talking about the emoji and not about me. I mean, yeah. Not that big. So, um, second hour. And to celebrate that, we are very slowly moving towards the new year. Um, more than 24 hours to go, presently. Bailey. I need some coffee to go with that Bailey. There we go. Coffee and Bailey goes well together. It's a bit like having an Irish coffee. The anonymous. I love when people are sneaky that way. And it gets me subs. Oh, that's like a double bonus. Someone got a gift. Someone got to be anonymous and I got an extra sub. That is like three in one. That's like Kinder Überraschung. Well, if you're from Denmark or Germany, you know that commercial. It's a toy. It's chocolate. It's a surprise. <laughs> Yeah, it's true. I'm a Twitch affiliate. The, that um, that took some work. I actually had to stream for several days in a month. You can still see like the shock in my face for someone as inconsistent as me. But I was like, no, Sasu wants this. I'm going to show her. I can do it. And did all these little streams, um, trying to just get all the hours together so uh, so we could get the emote. Now we got it. And uh, I'm actually kind of happy with it. It was really just a, oh, oh no, now I have to make an emote, uh, emoji. I better get get it done quickly. Uh, but I'm, I'm kind of liking it, actually. So, Kinder uh, Überraschung. Yeah. But as always, there is no pressure for people to sub or anything like that, unless you want to be able to spam everyone with um, my cross-eyed kitty. Because everybody needs a cross-eyed kitty. If you want to see it, like, let me see, uh, I'm just going into OBS for a minute. Let's do a display capture and then move this one so we don't get that effect and go in here. And this is the scratch I was talking about. This here, um, I, I was going to show my students um, how easy it actually was. Let me see, do I have like my face on top of everything else? Or No, I think this works. Yeah. So um, I wanted to show my students how easy it was to um, to use one animation um, as a base and then just change a simple little thing like the head of the animation. So this is from um, an, exam a tut an example tutorial we were working with with platform games and like the animation is like a simple 8 frame animation that is part of the scratch project but it's pretty easy to go in and do like the edit so I put our little emoji head on instead so uh, as you can see this is not an advanced graphic uh, <laughs> game this is just to kind of show the principles um, for anyone who remember what I talked about this out here is like the coding part of it. Um, uh, not really that much code to get this working because a lot of a lot of stuff is built in in this. Um, so yeah, if anyone feels like 
playing with stuff like that. Just go into Scratch, write platform tutorial, pick the very first one and just start out. You're going to learn a lot of basics about using loops and uh, how to just do simple movement and simple animation and stuff like that. Um, and everything is like Lego building blocks. You can see I can just like pull everything apart. Um, uh, and everything you just go out here and you kind of uh, grab the blocks you need and um, well yeah the, if you already know how to code you're gonna look probably look at this and say oh well this is kind of a kids game and it is kind of a kids game uh, so pretty uh, pretty decent for anyone who wants to kind of just go at doing basic coding and you know learning the principles. So, um, so yeah, uh, I've been spending a lot of my year looking into that for, you know, the sake of the students and all that. Not because I think it's fun at all, of course. Oh. So, uh, the goal is that, um, Later on, the students are going to move on to uh, doing coding in Game Maker, where they actually have to sit down and write the actual code instead of just doing the drag and drop functions. Uh, so hopefully, a lot of the basic prim principles um, will kind of uh, they will recognize it when we start working with it like that. Um, it's my hope, and they don't disappoint me. Like me and my students agree, I can be a bitch, but I don't mind people calling me one when I am. So they're gonna learn. <laughs> so no, I got I got some pretty nice um, reviews from my students and from my boss. So uh, so I'm gonna keep on doing this job until um, I'm done working or until. The, company shuts down or whatever. It's, uh, yeah, fun but fair. Uh, it's like when you're lucky enough to, to teach something that you really like. Uh, of course you know that your students can have days that's like, ah, oh, I don't really want to learn anything today. I'm a teenager and I really want to sleep 15 hours and play games for the rest of the time. I can totally get into that way of thinking. But I also know that someone has to come along and give like a kind but friendly kick to the forehead so that you kind of move on once in a while. So, yeah. And they get to do a lot of fun stuff. I mean, seriously, they get to do uh, coding about computer games uh, instead of having to do like ugh, when I started out coding uh, in school, it was like very first thing I remember coding on Commodore 128 was doing line codes for printing a letter in German. I mean, not half as fun. Um, not that I mind German, but I mean, seriously, you could do a bit more even on what the early Commodores. So, oh, I need some coffee to wash down the baby. And in a minute, I'm going to need some Bailey to wash down the coffee. No, I mean, seriously. Um, and, and I mean, uh, actually, I think sometimes that um, when people, they're like, oh, coding is dull, or boring, or extremely hard, or people start talking about it, like, I remember a lot of people talking about math. My first thought is not that they're necessarily right or that they're necessarily bad at it. My first thought is what way did the teacher choose to introduce this student to the subject? Um, because that can really mean a lot whether or not it's based on your own interests so that you have kind of a personal drive and an understanding that getting better at something is actually not just education for work, it's education for your own sake as well. So, so yeah, and, and when I uh, uh, did my computer science study, a lot of the programming was, and now we're going to do a booking system for a tennis club. Okay, we, yeah, sure, let's sit down and do a booking system for a tennis club. 
And then the next project was, and now we are going to do a system that's going to be used by the people who maintain the functions at a hotel. Okay, let's sit down and do that. Um, which would have been much more fun, it's like, yeah, and we are going to do like a Sims version of a hotel that has to run properly and stuff like that. But, you know, that's me and my uh, game development way of thinking, so... Yeah, let's see... I don't think I've thought a lot about what else I want to do in 2019 besides World of Warcraft and uh, lots more chain mail probably. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm I'm uh, I I bought the fabric for I'm gonna make myself a, a fancy coat because um, Anders actually bought himself a suit. So now if we have to go out somewhere with other adults. He's going to look like an adult, and I'm just going to look like a badly styled teenager if I don't get some more adult clothes. So I'm planning to use my tailoring skill to do something, um, you know, classic, fashionable uh, tailoring, uh, doing something like that. Um, yeah. Oh, congratulations, Mitsu. Yeah. Oh, that's so awesome. So, yeah, um, yeah chainmail coat. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking that if I have to wear something out of chainmail, I should probably stick to, like, you know, the bracelets and uh, may maybe, like, this much of a collar because, uh, like, the weight to uh, square inch ratio is kind of aggressive when you work with chainmail. Um, back when I was like in my in my twenties again, back when I was in my twenties, I actually tried uh, wearing chainmail uh, when I did live role playing, and my conclusion was that it might be made for fighting in, but I can't fight in it because I'm I'm too busy trying to not get stuck in mud, um, not used to dragging that much weight around, so. Um, so yeah, so that that's like a tailoring plan I have. Also, I have loads of um, fabric lying around just for doing like standard stuff. I'll probably do some more pants for myself. I mean, this year I did three or four pair of classic slacks. I did a couple of long sleeve t-shirts or normal t-shirt. Um, but not not really anything that's um, really that interesting. Just you know, normal clothes. So uh, only special thing about it is that it fits me because it's my measurement. So, uh, but that's again, I'm not a designer. I'm a tailor. It's not like oh, I'm gonna do something and it's gonna be groundbreaking and beautiful. It's more like oh, this technique is interesting. Let's see if we can just do it precisely the way it has to be done. Tailoring stream, maybe, maybe I could consider it. I would have to um, to break it down into several streams because um, I have to break the tailoring down into several real life episodes uh, because I forget it every time. I haven't done it for a while, but tailoring is actually um, pretty hard work um, when you have my weird um, hyper flexibility condition. Um, because of, of the work um, positions and, and the things you do. Uh, that would be like, maybe it would be what, like one stream for showing how to make a pattern. Um, if it has to be like, I'm, I'm actually going to teach something, it's going to be one stream for how to actually make a pattern from your own measurements without using any other people's patterns. Uh, a second stream about how to cut this correctly so you get all the correct parts and you get the fabric cut uh, in the right way so you know that's actually like 90% on whether or not something's gonna fit you or not especially if it's not t-shirt fabric uh, or anything elastic 
Um, and then it would be like a stream of, uh, of of how to doing all the prep work you do before you even sew. So it would end up being like a four or five part stream. Uh, and, even, and, and the sewing, I mean, if I decide to do like an actually complicated winter coat, which I probably won't, I don't like too high of a detail level on my own stuff, um, but it would still be like 20 hours to sew it. So that's a few streams when you're me. But if people would be willing to watch all those things cut down into two to three hour segments, I might consider doing it. It'd be a love. I can't wait. Really I can't really pronounce that name. It be the boy? It be the boy? Hmm. But welcome to the stream. Interesting question. Ask me when I'm at work. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Oh yeah, I remember my mom did uh, some of my clothes as well when I was a kid. I had like a crocheted skirt and, um, you know, a crocheted skirt she made me. And I think it, it lasted me from I was eight to I was 13 because it was like with a drawstring in the waist. So as I got a teenager and, and bigger, I just ended up removing like the drawstring and then it still fit quite a bit more tight, but it still fit. Um, I remember she made me a house coat. Um, yeah, she was pretty darn creative, really. Um, and she didn't have like I mean, I can afford to go out and pretty much pick out the material that I want for the things I want to do. Uh, so I consider myself pretty lucky. I mean, I love doing things that are recycled or. Yeah, upcycled in any way, um, and I've considered uh, doing some details on the coats. Maybe like doing some insets in a color, on the color that is um, in a different material. Uh, maybe some upcycled something because I've got so many scraps lying around. Um, but but a lot of that is something I have with me from my childhood because. I just made things out of whatever was at hand it, when I got an idea. And my mom remember that too. She's like, oh, something's missing. I was planning a project with this tiny piece of fabric, but it's gone. I think I know who has it. Um, yeah. She said in many ways I was really easy to entertain. Just leave me alone and don't complain when supplies go missing. So, uh, so yeah. Well, yeah, a pretty creative family. Um, and in, in different directions as well, because on one side you have like um, the craft people um, like me and my cousin who does a lot of knit designs where we are like extremely technical about it and not very designy about it. And you've got like the other part like my dad, who did a lot of theater and knew how to play a guitar and wrote songs, and my sister, who everything she does is just, I mean, her creativity is a totally different level. Um, I don't think she always knows what she's going to, I mean, when I start doing something, I'm like, I'm going to do a bag, it's going to be square, it's going to have this and this and this and this technique, and that's how it's going to end up. My sister, she can start out on something that's going to end out as something completely different, but that it, it looks cool. So, um, <coughs> I can't think that way. So, it, it's kind of a mix. And then I've got my one cousin who was a golfer, and I think he's a, tra he's a golf trainer now. Uh, he was on the Danish um, national gol golf team. So, uh, and my dad was really good at football, soccer, um, 
my sister too. They're like the not so breakable part of the family. Um, it depends on what part of the genetics you got, I think. So. So so yeah, and my uh, my other the the brother to the cousin who does the knit design is what is he one year younger than me, and he's still a heavy metal musician. He's a bass player. Um, I think the band is called Apocalyptica. Yeah. Um, so it's like you don't feel. I think I would stand more out if I didn't do any crafts or anything in my family. It would be like, who are you? How did you land here? Um, I'm just one of the more technical ones. Oh no, not those. Not, oh no. What is the name of that band? I know who you mean. Uh, it was. Be I, I know why I, I remember that name instead. It's because I actually talked to my aunt and my mom today about Apocalyptica. They're a Finnish band who plays um, Metallica uh, solely on, sh on, on cellos. Uh, totally awesome band. I saw them live at the Roskiller Festival one year. Let me just, give me a second. I need to figure out what my cousin's band is called. Da, 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 da. Where is he? He's always all over my timeline. So he's probably not now that I'm looking. Oh, there he is. There he is. Necrosis, they're called. So not Apocalyptica, Necrosis. Which is definitely not the same thing. <laughs> I mean, both can be kind of world-ending, but not the same thing. Yeah, I know. I know so. I blame the alcohol. It was an English word and was kind of dark, so I thought I remembered pretty well. Yeah. Very ladylike. The only ladylike part of me is me sipping alcohol. So yeah, uh, hopefully Maya is going to say yes to doing a stream with me because it was one of the first things that um, Sasu and Wilji mentioned when I said it would be fun inviting people from stream to um, to come on Discord voice and and stream with me, having having a conversation. And she was one of the first ones they mentioned that we should do an art stream together. And I mean, we like each other, so why not? I thought about uh, maybe invited Shading Areas to do something uh, of the same because he's a pretty fun dude too and I love his art. So, um, so yeah. Um, and I'm, as I said before, I'm pretty sure anyone that's in this channel has something that um, they could teach and I'm gonna find it and I'm gonna make you do it. <laughs> no. I'm, I'm gonna be nice about it. Yeah, yeah. I, th I think Shaders is really funny. Um, we've had some um, uh, some pretty funny uh, direct messaging going on on Facebook at points um, because uh, we can get to the same level of sarcasm uh, sometimes when we talk. So. So some very non-politically correct conversations that I've enjoyed very much, especially if I've been in like a bit of a dark mood, like, Arr. and then he's been there and like, yeah, Arr. and so that is awesome. I, I really appreciate everyone I, I, um, I've been so lucky to meet uh, during the multimedia plat platforms that uh, I've gotten on. Oh, I got an achievement. What achievement did I got? I need, sorry, one minute. I got a, a Twitch achievement. I need to see what I got. I have no idea. Oh, it says get 15 people chatting at the same time to unlock additional VIP badges. 
So I think we just won, won some badges, and that means I'm going to have to draw some more stuff. Darn it. Oh well. That's the thing. You win something and then it ends up that you have to do some work. <coughs> Typical. <laughs> ah, well, we're going to figure that out. Maybe next time I am going to... Uh, yeah, 15 chatters. So, uh, so a chatting achievement. I mean, it has to count for something, right? That people are at times actually talking to each other in chat. Hmm. I did good. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to look serious, but it's not working because today it's a uh, actual video feed of me which means I'm actually sitting down looking at a video feed of me on the screen and I can't take that seriously. Here we won some badges! If we're lucky they're honey badges! Really sweet ones! Maybe a honey badger bad. Honey badger badge, yeah. Well, Hufflepuff badges are sweet too. I appreciate Hufflepuff badges. I mean, I, I am of course um, a, a Ravenclaw, so um, I have to appreciate Hufflepuffs. Seriously. They're the one who, who kind of makes up for it when everybody else get lost in studies somewhere else. They're kind of making sure that the social life is actually happening still. Uh, actually connecting to people instead of books. That is quite a qualification, you know. Not everyone can do that. I think they should maybe have a honey badger because as I've observed in the Harry Potter books and the Harry Potter universe all in all, I mean it's not like they're in any way meek uh, when they really have something to fight for, you know? Um, they're, they're really badger on, yeah. But I have to say, of course, I like the raven. And I mean not just because it's a uh, Ravenclaw, but also because it's like Edgar Allan Poe, Goss, representative of uh, Norse mythology. So, so yeah, I, I, I think I kind of fit in there. So anyone here who doesn't know what house they are in Harry Potter, who somehow managed to avoid taking a test at some time, Because that, that might be an achievement all on its own. <laughs> well, if you want to offend someone from Ravenclaw, do something based on false knowledge. Go ahead, I dare you. <laughs> so, uh, but t today I am uh, not a Ravenclaw. Today I am a Lannister. Well, nobody has to be interested in Harry Potter. It's just so funny. I think it's so funny that um, most people I know had at some point taken the Harry Potter test, whether or not they've read Harry Potter or seen the movies. Um, of course not my mom, but she's 69. Um, and it's just one of those things, you know. Like knowing what star sign you are, even though you don't believe in star signs. I can tell you that I am a, I'm a Sagittarius with the Scorpio ascending in classical star signs and I am a wood tiger with the dragon ascending in the Chinese star signs. I don't believe in star signs but I know what I am.
mainly because my mom had a period of, um, you know, there was a lot of, I, I call it like alternative um, healing trends and stuff like that back in the 80s when I grew up. Uh, it's like everything from California just hit Denmark simultaneously. So my mom was into everything like star signs and crystal healing and pendulums and whatever. There was a lot of different things. Uh, so I knew what chakras was uh, when I was like 10. Uh, I'm not sure I believe in chakras, but I know what they are supposed to represent and where they're from and stuff like that. So weirdest things that you sometimes pick up, you know. Aries Sun, Pisces Moon, Taurus with Cancer Ascending. Yeah, even Chinese stars. Well, it's like um, the Chinese star signs in some ways are easier because you just need to know what year you're born. Um, and then of course there's like you can have all the different elements in your star sign depending on it's like there's 12 years between the same sign comes back but then it's in a different version so you can be like a fire tiger or dragon or you can be a wood or is it rock well yeah anyways that's just me spouting out random knowledge that i picked up uh, as a preteen my mom even got like a horoscope made for me. I was, well, pretty interesting. But like, yeah, I, I was kind of um, talking to someone uh, at the Christmas uh, end of year party um, at work, uh, where I just talked about, we talked about um, different diagnoses you can have, like, um, there used to be Asperger's, but now that's made into some other definitions depending on some other character traits. Um, every, so many people today have a diagnosis and some people use it to kind of put people into this box. Which to me is like saying that you have to be this certain way because you're the star sign. Um, because within each diagnosis everybody still have their own unique personality that is going to change a lot of the things that was kind of the headlines of the diagnosis, but, you know. Oh, well, if it's used to calculate age, that is actually a practical purpose, you know. I never even, I never figured out what my patronus was. So I'm just gonna say, uh, without anyone testing anything for me, it's probably a cat. If it's not, I'm going to be disappointed. Some, some kind of a cat. Hopefully, like, a, a really beat-up alley cat or something like that. I want that to be my patronus. I ran out of Bailey. Done. Coffee. Yeah. I mean, I know a bitch is technically a dog. If you could have like a bitch cat, that would be my Patronus. It has to be like a little fight in it, you know. Nah, the bottle isn't empty. This is my very, very first Bailey of the evening. But I did have a beer earlier in the first hour. So I'm on one beer and one Bailey at the moment. Um, I'm kind of warming up because I have to be able to withstand a bit more alcohol tomorrow. Uh, I bought like an entire bottle of mead, uh, the ginger one that I had uh, when we did the meet up here. And we've got beer and we bought champagne for 12 o'clock. Uh, fingers crossed that we're actually still awake at 12 o'clock. So, um, oh, everything is pretty. Uh, I mean, I don't need strong alcohol to get drunk. I don't. I, I get tipsy just on stuff like this. Uh, and even though I'm like, I'm drinking a little bit very slowly over several hours, I have a very low alcohol tolerance. Um, probably my um, Sam genes, because if I'm not totally wrong... Hmm, if I'm not totally wrong, there is a bit of Asian genetics 
from the entire walk across from the top of Asia, the top of Europe, across to America, uh, across Greenland. Um, low alcohol tolerance, not very good with uh, lactose based products. Done. And I like cheese. That's so sad. But yeah, so um, back when um, I used to just, it just used to just be me and my mom for New Year's, so that's like somewhere over 15 years ago, uh, we would celebrate and the entire evening, uh, we would be plenty tipsy from like one bottle of rosé mixed up with um, soda. Uh, so. <laughs> <laughs> pretty cheap date in, on that account um, and I mean when I was a teenager it was like this is a country where you should at least be able to drink like a six pack or something like that so I trained my way up to be able to during the night drinking a six pack and maybe a couple of drinks when I went out dancing afterwards but you know I'm, I'm never gonna be like hardcore it just tends to make me sleepy, you know. Oh, yeah. The evil autocorrect. Yeah. I mean, mine just makes suggestions, my phone. Um, I don't let it have any power whatsoever besides suggestions. Because back when I let it ha have that power, it just ended out wrong. It couldn't really handle like my mixed Danish English vocabulary. Um, yeah, that was like not good. One beer. Well, again, it just makes you like really cheap. Oh no, don't say snaps, will she? That is like my horror. Uh, especially from when I was younger, like every time you had to go like an office Christmas party in Denmark, there's snaps. And not like uh, I've heard in other countries, you know, like a mint schnapps or peppermint schnapps or something like that. No, no, this is Danish schnapps. Danish schnapps is not supposed to taste good, you know. It's supposed to taste like something that you would use to clean your windows, maybe with a little bit of cumin seed in it. That's like Danish schnapps. So I think classically you're supposed to eat it with, um, you supposed to drink it while you're eating uh, pickled herrings or maybe a strong cheese because then you're not going to notice how horrible, horrible, horrible this tastes. And it doesn't just taste horrible, it really has a kick. So, um, so yeah, if, if you want to end up telling the CEO of the company how you think the company should be run, Please go ahead, drink some schnapps at the Christmas office party. That might have happened to me once. Hmm. So, consequences. The only thing, good thing I can say is that most people are like pretty tolerant about what you do at office Christmas parties when you've had schnapps because everybody gets stupid. Mm, need. Mead is the best. And it doesn't have to be uh, strong necessarily, just a good taste. That honey base, that is awesome. Okay, we're coming up on uh, two hours now, so doing pretty okay. Uh, starting to feel a little bit tired. That might be a bit of the alcohol, but I'm trying to counter it with coffee. But uh, let's just say that my usual bedtime is 11 at latest, and then I'm not much, uh, worth much like the last two hours, so I'm doing pretty, pretty good right now. So let's take a little break. <sighs> so I can go and, like, you know wipe some of the sweat off my face because darn it's hot with floor heat yeah I think I'm gonna go open a door um, see you in five to ten minutes and this time 
I'm gonna put up this. Oh, not that one. This. No, not that one. Where did I put it? There we go. BRB. Let's just put it center stage like that and see you again in five to ten minutes.
Are you still there? Oh, you're still there. And I better move this. I can't help it. I'm just having fun tonight. Welcome back. No, I don't have to say welcome back to you because I can see in chat that you were here the whole time. So, oh, just need to change something on my OBS. There we go. <coughs> so let's see if my voice can handle another half an hour, uh, where I can still enunciate just close to correctly. I think it was fun. Someone asked me if I was American. Do I sound American? Hmm. I don't think I sound American. But then again, when you listen to your own voice, you just hear like, wah, 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 and like, ah, stop it. So, I do not listen to myself. I think one of the few things I've listened to with myself is uh, the podcasts um, that I was in, because I wanted to hear whether I actually managed to say something coherent while I was doing them. And... If they kind of edited out the worst things in the in the process, and luckily people are pretty good at editing, so it's easier than doing live. Um, so yeah, I invite everyone to come and do a live with me because it's so good. Yeah, no, yeah, definitely Hoopod. I love Hoopod. I think it's a fun way to get to know other members of the community and hear what they're about. Um, because there's a lot of active members of the community who are not streamers. Uh, I mean, just think about the entire community of mods and the in and all the different chat communities for all the different um, human channels. Uh, yeah, 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 it, it, it was fun. Uh, it was, I mean, it was kind of stressful doing it, but it was fun listening to when everybody else was doing it. So, um, so yeah, I hope I get a new good episode soon. Good chaotic, chaotic good, yeah. I'm more of like chaotic neutral. Or maybe neutral, true neutral. So... Well, it, it's like um, like everyone who's tried to be the people who's already been on Hoopot or has tried to be interviewed somehow, no matter how much you prepare and think about what you're going to say, you're gonna f something up on on the way. Um, something is going to come out wrong, or I mean, I think you have to be really, really trained um, in in saying the same things over and over again to, to get it right when you're doing something like that. Uh, like, you know, politicians, they have like um, 20 sentences they can use in like any connection. Uh, and they're very trained and you can hear when that comes out, it, it slips out smoothly every time in every situation. And, but the rest of us who are not politicians, um, we might have something we're used to talking about, like me in teaching situations, but Everything else that people ask you, you have to kind of think and talk at the same time, which doesn't always end up perfect, you know. Um, yeah, why not you, Mitsu? Uh, seriously, why not you? Um, like I said, uh, I genuinely believe that everybody has an interesting story somewhere, whether they believe it or not. So... <laughs> Stop it, Binky. No. It's not always selling it. It's uh, when you're actually interested in listening to what somebody else has to say, you know? <clears throat> yeah, translating. Yeah, exactly, Zazu. That is one of the things that I am fighting with sometimes, is trying to, how am I going to get this out right? I know exactly how I would say it in Danish, but how do I get like the right nuances um, when I have to say it in English instead? And and I think that by now I'm pretty trained in just ranting in English after having, you know, many years of um, being on game servers and stuff like that. But still, it, it's still like a challenge. Um, I... I uh, 
I mean, I think when I was younger, I thought it was so funny because like half my family is from Finland and my oldest aunt who died uh, recently, um, when she got to Den uh, four of the siblings out of six siblings ended up in Denmark. Uh, so I had like uh, two aunts and an uncle uh, in Denmark as well. And my oldest aunt, you can just hear that when she left Finland, she was already a teenager. So her language was formed. Uh, so when she, with the rest of the family, moved to Norway and then through Sweden and, and, and to Denmark, there's like remnants of the family all the way from Finland, Norway, Sweden, Denmark. Uh, and further on, because immigration is apparently a trend in my family. Um, when she talked, you could hear that sometimes she would make a joke. And the joke would... she would think it was so funny. But the way it came out would be totally wrong, because she thought the joke in Finnish, translated it and let it come out in Danish. And it was... sometimes it made no sense at all. Sometimes it was like twisted kind of sense, but the funniest part was her really, really laughing about it. And not until I had to, on a regular basis, uh, communicate with other people in a language other than the one I'm born to, did I discover how hard it is to try to translate colloquialisms, um, things that you say, um, well, even the words for the things. Um, so, so a, a, a lot of, uh, I mean, I'm lucky because the, I, I'm born into a multilingual uh, lingual fam family and that forms your brain to listen for patterns in more than just one language, um, which is why I'm doing pretty okay in English uh, and I'm not totally horrible in German, even though I'm way out of practice. Uh, but if you think about a lot of people who grew up with only one language and had to leave their country, maybe uh, when they were in like their 20s or 30s and immigrate to another country and then have to, besides all the cultural differences, also have to try to be fluent in a language that your um, brain patterns aren't really adapting to. Uh, quite a challenge, really. Quite a challenge. Uh, yeah, it's harder to get to know someone who have a hard time getting the um, their true feelings and opinions across because the the language is that the language barrier is a real barrier, um, and people tend to sometimes get caught up in the language barrier. I know from my family that you can do a hell of a lot with body language uh, when language fails you. Uh, so I'm also someone who, if I travel abroad and run into people where I don't know the language, I'll just start giving me a pen and a paper and I'll start drawing stuff and doing, you know, all my crazy hand movements. Yeah. Um, but, um, you know, yeah, the, the neural connections, and the neural connections are so much easier to form when you're a kid. So even just, uh, and the thing is that, in part, uh, uh, the brain of a baby will also respond to something from a screen. Um, but there's um, a much better connectivity. Um, now we're talking about babies without vision impairment, if they actually have a connection to a human face at the same time that they are learning the basic sounds of a language. There's like an entire neuro-linguistic um, area called Mother Rees about how we learn the early sounds of the language. I think I went into that at some point before. Um, but, but language is like a uniquely interesting study. Now I went on a rant again. Why did I get into language? Don't make me talk about language. <laughs> So, oh yeah, I was also thinking for like the next year, maybe do a bit more of like, do something where every time I stream, I will have like a Danish le lesson for, for learning like a conversational piece or, or something like that. 
uh, because some people mentioned that would be funny. And apparently, for some reason, I saw in the news, uh, there's like an entire state in America where studying Danish became in. I don't really get it, uh, but okay. I think it was like Midwest, so it's probably an area with Scandinavian descendants or something like that. But um, yeah. So yeah, exactly, Mitsu. So the entire connection between the facial expressions, the um, the tone of voice when you teach the language, um, I was very fascinated just by the fact that the the simple sounds we say to a baby, you know, we we all have this like language where oh no 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 boo, 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 boo. those base sounds that you say to you know cute animals or or babies. Um, are actually the building blocks of your own language. So if you have a Chinese mother talking to her baby, the sounds that comes out will be sounds that are building blocks in Chinese. And that is one of the reasons that um, some languages are very far apart, because even the base building blocks of the language on the mother reason stage of the language are really different. Yeah. Yeah, language is awesome. I mean, it's, it's one of the things that fascinates me with programming as well. Um, and and uh, even law study, the way the tiny nuances in the way that you formulate something can totally change um, the, the fine definitions um, in, in what you're saying. You, I, I just love language, yeah. Um, uh, Darkthian, doing me some educate. Welcome to doing me some educate. Don't worry, it's just me ranting. I have a lot of weird topics that I sometimes end up ranting about. And language uh, and neuroscience is one of them, just because it's cool. <laughs> I'm educational. <laughs> well, education me this. Cheers, everybody. I can't help it. I'm a teacher. When I was a teenager, I was so pissed that the grown-ups around me said, you're gonna end up... They were like, I had three options. Either I was going to be a preacher, or politician, or teacher. I mean, out of the three, I, I, I'm pretty happy with the one it ended up being. But back then I was like, no, I'm not gonna talk to anyone, ever. Just leave me alone, you know. Um, can I explain uh, blind people what the color red looks like? Well, you have to define... You, I think you're meaning a born blind, because I had a blind student that I worked with, and he wasn't born blind. Uh, it was like a degenerative uh, disease in his eyes that kind of shut down his sight. So he would, of course, understand what you meant, because he's actually seen the color red. Um, but what you will often... When you talk to blind people about the concepts like color if they are not um, if they're born blind you will often talk to to them you, you will describe to them that it's like a common denominator for certain objects like in Denmark mailboxes are red roses are red and all these different things are red so they will get like an abstract idea about this is um, but actually not just the color red the entire uh, definition of color for a blind person, um, if you have a blind person who might not even have a dark light vision, that's even harder because even the shades of gray um, can be hard to explain. So, see, now you got me into something else. I again, this is um, the biological part of psych. There's some biological parts of psychology, neuroscience that I'm really fascinated about. And actually, people have been working with questions like exactly this all the way back to Aristotle. And so the early Greek philosophers, they work with that a lot. Yeah, uh, I, and often you will you will end up as as we're describing things by saying that there's like an emotional concept behind our relationship to a lot of colors. So you can have like, a, we talk about a green light. Uh, we all know what a green light is if we're like visual because we know green means go. Um, 
so so you can go in and see like we we have some uh, socially defined ways that we work with certain colors because of course we have them as like a common denominator in our culture like a language that is in um, our surroundings Uh, not all we can know about the, the, the entire thing about uh, if I'm seeing red the way you see red. The, the thing we can go in and we can do is we, we can say with certainty that um, the taps, the cells in your eye are different whether you're colorblind or not and what kind of colorblind you are. Um, we can say if uh, see that um, within a certain culture different colors will evoke um, a like uh, brain response if you're doing like an MRI while people are observing colors. So, uh, but a, a lot of our experience, besides being visual, we are also an emotional species. Uh, like those, um, this part of our brain up here, uh, the pattern recognition part of our brain uh, is what makes sure that we're like a species that caught between um, madness and genius, uh, you can say, because we can actually see things that are not there. We, we can look at the clouds and see a bunny. There's no bunny there. It's just that pattern recognition part of our brain that goes in and correlates that to the shape of a bunny. Um, so, so there's a lot of things you actually can say um, and I'm really interested in the things that you can say. This is one of the reasons I love neuroscience, because neuropsychology, because in psychology there's like different fields. There's like personality psychology, which is the one I call the touchy-feely. How do you feeling when you're doing this? And is this like a trauma from your childhood? Then you've got like cognitive psychology. Those are the people who develop really good treatments against phobias because they don't care how you got the trauma. They're just going to fix it using certain methods, really successful successful treatment methods. And um, what I'm a teacher of, I'm uh, at the moment I'm a teacher of software de development um, for special ed students. Uh, so it's computer science. Um, I've been a teacher in different areas. I've done grade school substitute teacher teaching too when I was way younger, but um, <laughs> I deny the existence of the great cloud bunny god. Yes, I do. It is not there. Religion and everything else that uh, if you kind of measure on people having religious experiences, this will also be this part of the brain, like the pattern recognition part of the brain, which is like... Um, in uh, neurodevelopment is like the newest part of the brain for humans. Um, the reason we've got like this forehead. Um, oh, sleep well, dark winter dreams. And uh, have a great, 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 great New Year's Eve and enjoy the food all the night. I'll be thinking about you. So, uh, no, I'm basically I'm a teacher of a lot of stuff. It's like, what's my education? I have a degree in computer science and game design and uh, algorithmics. I have um, a degree in business law. I have uh, I had a semester on psychology when I was younger. That's where I got this entire bug about neuroscience. Um, but basically I'm willing to teach anything if it can help anyone. Uh, as long as people don't ask me to kind of teach over my level, because I'm not comfortable if I'm asked to teach something that I'm not competent in, so. <laughs> oh yeah, leveling up. There's like, I'm, I'm leveling up in, in the intelligence area and in the um, crafting area. I mean, the, the entire strength and constitution area, that's where I sacrifice my roles, you know. Ah, it's just a hobby, Zazu. Like, every, you know, I have so many hobbies. Um, I mean, again, I'm blessed. I live in Denmark. And in Denmark, if you're unemployed, at least in my lifetime, it's been like this. Either you take 
some kind of um, you have to if, the, if there's no work for you you have to educate yourself you have to go out and have to take a class on something and I just always thought everything was interesting the hardest part for me in education was actually choosing choosing a direction and trying to stick to it and that's why I've got like these very widespread degrees um well, that depends what it is, what it is you really want, what it is you want with computer science, that at the end. Um, because there's so many different directions you can go vocationally with a degree in computer science. So, um, if you're like, it, it, it's definitely, are you more, more of a coder or are you more of a developer? Are, are you like into systems engineering? Um, because then you have to add on some things about um, company structures and, and, and learn a bit about that because a lot of the products you're going to develop is um, a virtual shadow uh, image of the corporate structure that you're doing it for. So, so it depends on what level you're going for and, and what vocational direction you're going for. Um, well, those are great skills, Sazu. You are an expert in social skills in my book. I love having you on my team. And kudos for studying computer science, Dr. Theon. I mean, I really enjoyed it. I mean, some parts of it sometimes make me feel like my brain was going to explode. Um, but it was worth it, and it was like really a mental workout. Yeah, I love my lurkers. Everybody is welcome. I'm like, if, if there's anyone who's like top level in, um, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm imagining Sazu as a druid, you know, someone with like a uh, really serious nature connection. Sorry, my friend, my boobs are hanging so low they won't stay on screen. I'm too old for that shit. It would like demand, like, lift up to my nose, so nah. <laughs> nah, he's fun. Let's see if he says something more funny. Come on, badger the old lady. Not an old lady, badger the old bitch. You're welcome. Yes, I get it. It comes with age, my friend. Nobody wants silicone. If you want silicone, oh, sad. Nah, you know me. I'm just generally too happy to like really care about trolls. I think they're kind of cute. They're trying out their social skills. They jump into a channel where they can see there's an actual conversation going on, and then they're like. Oh, watch me, watch me. I'm saying something dirty. Please be scared. Honey, find someone who's not from Scandinavia. Go. Yeah. Nah. <laughs> it's just. Yeah. Where were we at? Oh, yeah, I was talking about Sazu and Druid skills. When I'm like imagining Sazu in an adventure game. She's like, uh, and it, it's going to be thing. It's going to be bats and uh, animals that people maybe normally don't care about. She's like the special guardian for that kind of people. Yeah, they're cute, right, Nitsu? <laughs> Web development and machine learning. What will be more relevant in the future? Um, when we're talking about web development, um, it's one of those things that we're, it, it's there's been like an Im immense development since back when I did my first HTML coding in the 90s and today, where uh, you know people, a lot of people do their own websites, even for companies because you've got all these really, really easy to use WYSIWYG um, editors. So, um, 
how much money there's in it. Because I always think when people ask me a question like that, relevance, I don't only think like uh, big picture, social world relevance, I also think about relevance for the people learning it, um, if they're actually going to be able to make a living from it. And it's one of those things where you get a lot of automated solutions. But then again, it's hard. To, it's still hard to say uh, how the web is going to develop because it's really changed a lot from um, back in the '90s and then today. You know, um, I think you really, you really, you really have to want it because it's a very commercial area, very commercial area web development. Uh, <laughs> oh, God damn it, man! I was like, well, you at least you get me to laugh. That's something. Cheers on that again. It's an excuse to drink, you know. So <laughs> he didn't just write that. <laughs> oh, sorry. Sorry, I'm just like, I'm way too entertained by this troll. So, yeah. Nah, not stand-up comedian, because that requires, you know, a bit of... You have to kind of feel the room. And see what's like, what's the situation here. And if you want to be like, um... There's, there's like a certain uh, version of stand-up comedy that is like an attack comedian. And uh, a lot of the comedy is... is they, they're kind of reading the audience, you know. Uh, that was a RuPaul reference. Well, it's probably a reference to a lot other stuff than RuPaul, but that's where I learned it, you know. Um, so, the, it's an art to read a room. It's a, an art to actually make an insult that in one way actually it really hits something so that the person that you're insulting can recognize it in themselves. Um, and at the same time, have like a laughable quality. So, uh, so I'm not sure it's like stand-up comedian he's going for. I, I'm thinking he's just trying, you know, on the basic offensive uh, attention thing. So, uh, but I was I was actually talking about um, what was like uh, yeah um, do, 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 web development and machine learning. Um, I actually think that machine learning is something that is going to grow. It's it's already it's already at a level where uh, early on it was like well it, it was a bit of like a, a sideshow, um, but it's actually coming to uh, commercial use now, uh, and you're using it in a lot of the big applications. Um, and for development as well. So if I should go for something that where I'm sure there's going to be a lot of development, both for for like keeping my mental um, faculties agile, uh, and um, that there's actually a tendency to be a, a potential for a lot of money, and uh, I would say machine learning. Yeah, go and offend some other streamers. It was really nice having you, Pishwa. Feel free to drop by another time. Hey, hey, don't disparage him too much. He's just, you know, he's training. This is like the training channel. So he came in here, he's got some response. So, um, yeah. <laughs> People writing things that I have no chance of pronouncing with my lack of teeth and a little bit of alcohol under the vest. <sighs> hey, I actually also went to school for, um, not for becoming an, an electrician, but again, back, this was be actually before my 20s, um, uh, when you go to college in Denmark, you can kind of choose different directions. And I've always been more into the um, things that are like um, crafts and not just, you know, soft creative crafts, but also like uh, uh, I, I considered being a woodworker <coughs> and a blacksmith. Um, 
because again I've had a really hard time deciding what I wanted to be and I really like start doing stuff with my hands as well. Uh, so back when I went to, um, to college the first time around uh, it was actually um, specialized in electricity. So if I should um, accidentally electrocute myself I know the specific first aid. No worries. <laughs> nah, Bishwa, no luck. Magic Irish milk. Uh, I would actually say go for different algorithms because algorithms they translate from one coding language to another. So um, the more you have in general in the algorithms, um, the more you'll be prepared for like uh, the deeper functions when going to different coding languages. You don't look a day over 24. Well, that's kind of sad. Can't you see the grey bits? I'm pretty sure I actually developed some grey bits up here. Ah, darn it. Level 99 smithing. Blacksmithing is cool. My dad was a smith. Uh, my mom worked in um, healthcare before, um, you know, the same weird uh, double jointed thingy got her handicapped early. So, um, what language I use for programming? Okay, one of the things that I usually tell to people is don't get stuck on a language. Um, it's going to change what language you are going to work with. Uh, I would actually rather see people be pretty proficient in writing good pseudo code that could translate into different languages uh, because the language will depend on what kind of applications you're coding for. Uh, what your employer wants if you end up with an employer not being self-employed and um, development in the language area isn't done yet. So don't get too stuck on one language. <laughs> your pubes are grey but you don't know why. Should you see a doctor? Nah, you're probably just past menopause. <laughs> oh, so it's for a job related. Well, if you have a boss, I'm pretty sure they already have picked out a language for you. There's a difference on how I answer whether people have like an actual actual work question or if they're asking me something in their studies. It's a different thing. It's crazy. 19 viewers. God damn it, I'm gonna get more achievements on this. Oh, that means I have to design more badges. Ugh, too many viewers. <sighs> Books or sources to recommend to learn different algorithms? No, I wouldn't say I'm uh, I'm up to date on that at the moment because, like I'm, I said earlier in this uh, stream, the teaching I'm doing at the moment is like really low level teaching. So uh, I'm back to um, <laughs> where I'm trying to explain people how to to learn what a loop is. So. Uh, I don't think any of the suggestions I can come with would be like current. I would rather just go out there and Google it or find someone who's like more recent into teaching at that level to get some answers. My favorite species of moth? Hmm. That's actually, hmm. The ones that doesn't eat clothes because like as a tailor, I hate the kind of moss that eat, eats uh, wool. They're really annoying. <laughs> Two wild foxes. Yeah, those are like my very fat cat and the not so fat cat. No, two of the fat cats and the not so fat cat. <laughs> no idea, generous songbird. Oh no, don't say partner, will she? Partner for people who's like 
professional streamers. It's not me. I'm just having fun, having a good laugh. Oh, my, I think my boyfriend would think it would be pretty cool if one of them turned into a fox. He's talking about wanting a fox. Explain what a loop is. Um, in this case, we're just talking about a basic loop concept in programming. You know, where um, you, for instance, in game programming, you most everything runs in a loop. You know, you have like code that you run through in a certain direction. They've got some if-else statements that if this and this happens then you're either going to finish off the loop, go to another loop, or jump to another place in this loop. Uh, so it's kind of just explaining the rules of how to run through some code in a continual loop. <laughs> yeah, I'm still alive. Didn't die in the last 10 minutes. <laughs> maybe I'll die in the next 10. Hang out and figure it out. You know, maybe it might just happen. The concept of an is if statement is pretty much the same concept as in language. So if in English, if in English you say if this happens, then do this, else do something else. That that's like the basic concept of an if statement. What's my New Year's resolution? I don't really have New Year's resolutions. I have like plans, like uh, earlier in the stream, I kind of talked loosely about some of the things that would be fun to do, like with the stream for the next year. Um, it's not really plans, it's just like, you know, asking around. This sounds fun, maybe I should do that. Um, <laughs> You would, you would hire me in a heartbeat. Well, I take that as a compliment, but I already have a job. So, yeah. I'm kind of happy with the job I have. Where do I buy my fabrics? Um, well, like, you know, most, I don't know if it's the same in most countries, but uh, there's not a lot of specialty stores left. It's mainly chain stores and in Denmark, Denmark, it's a, a store loosely translated to Fabric 2000. It was, you know, the company was made before 2000, so it probably sounded pretty futuristic at the time. But that's like the big uh, fabric chain store we have in Denmark. Otherwise, I go online and look around depending on what fabric I need, depending on what project I have to do. If I send a state, make a statement, and send you a nude pic, Will you send one back? Nah, don't count on it. Sorry, friend. Nah, sorry, Pishwa. I didn't even respect my professors when I was a student, and that's so long ago. I'm kind of really entertained by some of this trolley chat. But I'm also getting a bit tired, but, you know, everyone who's used to being here, they know that. I've been on for like, wow, since 7.30 and it's 10 here now, 10 past 10. Darn it, that's late for an old lady like me. But then again, I might actually be a bit more in training tomorrow when I actually have to try to stay awake until 12, otherwise I'm going to be woken up by all the fireworks. Yeah, it's funny, right, Sazu? My views on Brexit. That is a complicated matter that I can't get into in the time that's left while I'm still streaming. As you can see, I'm already like drooping sideways. Um, I'm from Denmark, I'm in the EU, so of course my um, views will be kind of coloured on my entire view on the EU and on why, yeah. No, don't let me, don't let me get into that. I mean, I once had a stream where I, people, the poor people in chat had to listen for half an hour about me talking about the new EU legislation about personal data, um, because that was kind of what I was thinking about at the moment, so no need to punish people.
Yeah, yeah, I think we need to save it for the next stream. Seriously. But everybody's welcome to come back. I mean, seriously, I can't even sell... The worst part is, I'm a very inconsistent streamer. Uh, if you go back and look at my vids, you'll be able to see that. I don't stream about any particular topic. I don't stream um, a particular amount of days a month. There's a good chance that if it's a Sunday, I might stream. But it's no guarantee, you know, um, because... As I keep on telling everyone, I'm not a professional streamer. This is all just fun and games to me. Uh, hanging out with some of all the wonderful friends I have uh, met across several multi multimedia platforms during my years. So, um. <laughs> I do guess that's a good one. Um, that's a good one. I think that would be like depending on individual fitness. And what your genetics kind of gave you in the first place. So, uh, and whether or not you are choosing artificial support. <laughs> oh, oh. Yeah, it's amazing, right? I mean, seriously. I'm way past the age where anyone should want to see me naked, so. <laughs> no, it's okay. He's used to me hanging out with way younger guys. I mean, they're mainly my students, but it's way younger guys, so. Uh, no, I don't have to, General Songbird. I'm kind of stuck on my island. Um, I don't travel a lot. <laughs> I should really do, like, uh, if effed up. Um, yeah. Like, I'm moderating my language because everyone in this chat is so fragile. I should do, like, an effed up. AMA at some point. That would be really funny. <laughs> uh, I'm gay? Not recently, no? No. <laughs> it's, it's not like the last thing that's going to get out there, like, you're gay. It's like, oh, seriously? That's so 80s? Could that even, like, provoke someone in the 90s? I don't think so. Buffy, was that then? No views on Dry Heart. I think I'm, I'm kind of running out of silly questions to answer, so... Uh, so I think we're going in on the wind down now, people. Uh, let's just say five minutes on the wind down. Um, do we have anyone to send people on to in a raid today? Sassy, would you please check that out? If there's like any any streamers that uh, we're going to raid. You know, otherwise, I, I actually remember like five minutes before I'm ending the stream. Back in year nine, one of my back in year nine. I'm not sure understanding that. Uh, I have no advice for anyone on kissing anyone. I'm like socially not capable of answering questions like that. I am not the one to ask advice from. <laughs> oh, Astro's online. Sure. I think we're going to do an Astro rate then. Um. Let me just set that up. Astro is awesome. And a great follow-up since we actually ended up talking about programming. Uh, yeah. Let me just figure this out. Darn it, now I clicked away from the channel. That's so typical of me. I said open in another window. There we go. I am so skilled at this. So, there we go. And Astro Pass. So 
always anyone is like, oh, she's really bad at this, no worries. We all know that. It's not a secret. <laughs> Let me just see. I am going to prepare the... He's playing Populous the Beginning. Yeah, I think I actually managed to set up a raid. Clever me. What type of shoe would be most practical during an apocalypse? That depends on what kind of apocalypse we're talking about. Are we Waterworld or are we uh, more like Mad Max? Because in one of them I would definitely recommend something waterproof and the other one uh, something that could take a lot of wear and tear. So. Oh, the plugs are fine. This is just like a really old plug. But it's still safe. It's one of those you can just uh, pick it apart. So as long as you make sure that the wiring is fine, there's no problem with that. I am ready for the raid. So I am going to send you all on to the Astropath. One of... One of uh, my favorite streamers. I love him. He's always funny and I love the games he play. It's not something I'm, I play, so it's like, oh, she loves this guy, uh, she knows everything about this, don't count on it. I don't know anything about a great deal of games. Um, but let's, uh, let's jump on to him, and uh, you just tell him it's the Fergal Raid coming in. Uh, he knows. He knows who you are. Let's go Raid. Motors! Okay, I'm pressing the right now button. Let's go.